What do the glitched attraction developers hide from the player off camera? The glitched attraction's fifth escape room is called Lost Media, and it can be a bit of a doozy. Ennard is hunting us down in the depths beneath the Cicer location area. In this video, we'll be taking another peek behind the scenes at how this game works, while breaking certain parts of it in the process. I'll also be tackling the elevator accident section as well, because there is actually a massive area cut from the game that I was able to restore. So I hope you enjoy. So as always, I like to do a quick recap so that everyone is on the same page for what normally happens in this area. You start off picking yourself up off the ground, and then head into some red tinted vents. This section is like a maze, but you eventually stumble your way into a room where all the animatronics from Sistral Location have combined into Ennard. Ennard starts punching the glass like a maniac, and your character runs away into the next room. You grab your Zardi's Maze flashlight, power up a solar panel, and head into the warehouse maze. Ennard is hunting you down in the darkness, and you must find a crowbar and then a keycard. You then must open a door with that keycard to start your work on the generator part of the escape room. Scared about are three stations that require you to solve challenges involving replacing fuses on a generator, and you need to grab the correct fuses from a bin to solve each station. Rinse and repeat three times, and a door will open and you can escape. But now, let's rewind time. So the first thing we're going to look at is the title screen, because it does update once we enter the warehouse area. So normally, you have this fixed shot, and you have Ennard who pops in all around the background. Now, just like the other title screens before this, Ennard is sort of just phasing through the floor. They kind of just crumple up into the ground, uh, just outside of the view of the camera. And when they move around the room, they just unload and then they appear somewhere else. But this room itself is actually very, very wide, and half the warehouse is missing. There's this big blank space up in front of where the camera's at, and normally, in the actual game portion, this would be filled with other shelves. But if we take a peek beneath the floor, we're actually going to find two floating screwdrivers beneath the map and a wrench. These tools are just flooding down here, and I'm not sure why, but nearby there's actually something that's way more interesting. So there's this endoskeleton down here that is in a T-pose, and <laughs> they're definitely asserting dominance down in this out-of-bounds area, but their legs are scattered so far away from them. And what I find pretty neat is that the legs are still attached. So we have these really long cables stretching from the bottom of this T-posing model all the way over to these different areas with the legs. There's one up above them on the floor of the warehouse, and then there's one like way out of bounds, like really far away. And you have this cable stretching from the leg to that body. Now this looks like a Freddy endo to me, um, just off the cuff, I've done no research into that, but if you know what it is, let me know in the comments because I'm curious. And that wraps up the title screen. The rest of the room is empty and very similar to the actual map, so we're going to move on to the actual game now. But before we get to this warehouse area again, we have a lot to cover. So although it's a very small portion of the game, there's this area known as The Accident. And the accident starts the moment you climb to your feet off the elevator and make your way through the vents. Now, there are these red colored vents that sort of are like a labyrinth. There's lots of dead ends, and you basically have to fumble your way through until you eventually come out on the other side. Now, this area is fairly short, and then you eventually find yourselves in the remains of the scooping room. But this vent area is actually hiding something really, really cool. So the vents you see here with this red, this is the final version that the developers move forward with. However, in the files, I was able to restore the old vent area, and it is massive. It is not closed off vents, it is a sprawling room full of many different walkways and ventilation systems, and beneath this room is a massive warehouse. Now, this is way different. Instead of going forward in the final version, and then going into that room, and then taking a left through that little crawl space to enter the vents, you instead just go straight forward onto this massive walkway. And all around you, surrounding you, is giant machinery, and there's like spotlights up above you, and there is these different paths that lead to different areas. Beneath you, you can see other walkways that have those emergency Joes, those little robots, just zooming across the map. And as you make your way deeper into this room, you eventually come across a crossroads. You have a choice to make, and there's three different paths you can go down. And to help guide you, there's actually developer text left over that is still written on these walkways. So in the center of these walkways are four labels. One says forklift room, one says the remains of the scooping room, another says stairs to the warehouse, and the last says Joe's maintenance. Now the inclusion of this giant room and this text really does show us that at one point, this area was a lot different. And not just visually. 
it shows you that in development, there was at least an idea that there was going to be some backtracking involved. It looks like you'd have access to these different places, and upon finishing the different rooms, you would have to backtrack and then move to the adjacent rooms across this giant room. Now, of course, I cannot prove that, but the writing is on the walls, or in this case, the walkway. And as I'm walking around, I can definitely tell that my computer is struggling. So it's either my computer is just really crappy, or I'm wondering if there was performance issues with the scale of this room. I'm dropping frames left and right, so was that a reason why this was scrapped? Was it that the idea or the flow of this room didn't work from a gameplay perspective? Or was it that this room itself was overly taxing on the game engine and someone's computer? It really makes you wonder. So the forklift path takes us back to the elevator crash area. And the scooping room path takes us to that same room in the final version of the game where Ennard is created. So these other two paths lead to dead ends. They come to these doors that we cannot open, and if we force the doors open, we'll see that nothing is on the other side. However, like I was saying, beneath this room looks like that warehouse area where we normally encounter Ennard in the final version of the game. So it makes me wonder if while you're up on the scaffolding, Ennard was lurking down below, beneath you, in this warehouse. And you have taken the stairs to the warehouse path to get down below to then encounter the Lost Media escape room. It would be kind of creepy knowing that Ennard was possibly down here. Now, of course, I do not know that for sure because the scooping room is still in the same location as before, which meant you probably would have needed to go there first in order to create Ennard through the cutscene, but perhaps there was not a door on the other side and then you backtrack to this main area. Now, before leaving this massive room, there's two other things I want to show. And one is I follow some Joes uh, down the path and they go in these little vent doors. And then beyond these vent doors, they just shoot out into the night sky and ride for a very long time before unloading. And the last thing before moving on is that the walkways of the final version of the game and this scrapped beta map do line up sort of near the scooping room. Now, the walkways of the beta map do not match up one to one with the actual location of the final scooping room. Room. It's misaligned just a little bit so you can't go through the door. But from this angle, you can see that as I toggle between these areas, they do lead to the same place. So from this point forward, we are no longer in the beta map, and we are back to the normal version of the game. So we enter this room, and we can see a cutscene of Ennard as they punch the glass. Now, it is possible to trigger this cutscene multiple times, because the trigger for it resets once you move out of the room and the screen dips to black. So, if we were to turn around once we get to Lost Media and force that door open, we can actually replay this cutscene by walking back to that trigger. And it sort of creates like this endless loop. But let's take a quick look into Ennard's room, because it is not as it seems. So if we trigger the cutscene and then we go in the room with our camera, you can see that Ennard, from their perspective, is actually just punching a wall. Now on our side it's glass, but from this perspective it's actually a solid wall. So the normals of this wall are actually on Ennard's side. And that's why we can look through it on our side and not see what they see. Now, taking the camera back there is cool, but I actually want to go back there myself. So we can pry some paneling off the walls and then force our ways through the door and we end up in this scooping room area. And all the objects back here do not have any colliders on them, which means everything can be walked through. There's no physics in place that will stop us from phasing through these objects. So we have an assortment of parts in this room, but what you can't see is beneath this room, we have more parts. And mainly, there is a headless Ballora who's missing other parts of her body. The remains of the model are just floating down here beneath the floor. So all of that wraps up the introduction to Lost Media, and now we're in the actual room itself. So around this entire escape room is flooring that you can walk on that sort of forms like an outer walkway. Currently, I'm behind the walls in an area you cannot access. But it's kind of cool walking around here and looking into the dark room, knowing that we're safe from Ennard. And speaking of Ennard, Ennard kind of walks aimlessly within the maze, and they don't teleport around. While actually playing this, I wasn't sure if the game moved Ennard around, like placed them closer to you when you got far away, but it appears that's not the case. However, I do find it funny that Ennard sort of walks like a T-Rex in the prowl. Now, if we disable the entire escape room itself and just keep the flooring, well, Ennard doesn't follow their normal paths. They will actually freely wander the room, and if they see us, they'll run directly towards us and not try to evade the objects that used to be there. 
However, in the essence of safety, I got on top of the shelves, and now Ender cannot get me at all. They have a hard time seeing me too, but when they do see me, well, they just look up at me and run up against the shelf. Trying to place Ender out of bounds at any point will actually make them walk through the walls and come back to their normal walking area. This is interesting because the player cannot walk through those walls, but Ennard can, despite not being able to walk through the shelves. So real quick, beneath this map we'll actually find those same objects that we found before on the title screen. The wrench and the two screwdrivers are down here, alongside the T-posing endo model with the stretched out legs. So it seems that when they copied this section to make the title screen, they just took the whole thing. Out of bounds objects and all. At this point, I wanted to mess with Ennard some more. So what I did was I made tons of copies of them, and they all were stuck on each other and stopped working. So watching them all like flow through each other is kind of funny, but also really, really creepy. So then I deleted all the innards but one, and I froze it on place, and I started to remove the parts from them. To the point where they were just floating parts in a mask. I then put them back together, and then made them a big boy. And this massive innard, who was looking over the shelves, could not hurt me. I could just run up against them and nothing would happen. Now, there is one final area that we still have to cover, and that is Vanny's secret lab. So within this maze, there is actually a purple key. And once we get this key, we go inside that room that we get access to with a key card, and we'll find a door with a purple lock. Using this key, we can access this secret laboratory. Now within this lab, you can find a tape and put it in the VCR. And once you do, a very sort of graphic video starts playing, where Vanny is killing this dude during an experiment. So what you see on the screen is not in the game itself. So this is not a projection, so to speak. This is actually a video file that's within the game files that is then called upon and played on top of the TV screen. Because of that, we cannot see this cutscene from a different perspective, at least from what I know right now. However, the body of the individual is still within this lab, and they are within a glass case. Now taking a look inside this glass case is a bit weird, because the body does look strange, and it's covered by like this cloth. Underneath that cloth, or that layer, there is no body, it is just an empty shell. But there are some hidden objects in this room that you cannot see. For one, and it's really strange, but there's a poster on the wall that was deleted. So if we put that poster back into the game, this is what it looks like. So the poster is about a man named Alfred C. Johns, who is age 48. He's missing from a Utah mental health facility since November 28th, 2030, which is quite a ways in the future. In this room, there's also an object that is an invisible knife, but it doesn't have any geometry and I couldn't restore it. But with the final coverage of Vanny's lab, that brings our adventure to a close. That was everything that Lost Media was hiding to my knowledge, so I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, consider subscribing right now because I have a lot more to cover. Cheers!